friends and family and acquaintances and anyone else interested in learning a little bit more about the sociology program at Indiana University. So I wanted to start these so that I could start documenting my progression in the program, um, what I'm doing, the research topics that I'm interested in, to hopefully keep everyone updated and also inspire those who um, might be interested in the same things or are thinking about being interested in the same things. So here we go. So first off, the biggest thing is that I will be starting my sociology PhD program at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. I will be moving in a couple of days, really just uprooting my entire life and going somewhere super unknown. So that's in itself overwhelming and stressful and very scary, but also very exciting. I'll be very sad to be leaving California. I've enjoyed my year-ish here. I've had amazing experiences, lots of learning, and had the best time, met amazing people. So I've literally fallen in love with Northern California and I will be back, hopefully. So for those who don't know, my research interests are in social psychology of social networks and social movements and political sociology. And what that really means is I'm interested in how individuals are moved to participate in collective action and activism and all things related to big political topics and activism. In my undergrad, I actually majored in research psychology and minored in mathematics. So I did my undergraduate honors thesis on intergroup contact and how that predicts participation in a huge social movement in modern times, the Black Lives Matter movement. Through that project, it was found that intergroup contact with African Americans actually predicted participation in the Black Lives Matter movement. And if you wanted to read a little bit more in depth, so go ahead and click the link down below will take you to where the thesis is published and feel free to reach out with any questions or clarifications or just to even talk about the project because um, I it is my pride and joy so far so I will be more than happy to discuss most of that stuff with you guys anyways so with my research interest I am interested mainly in intergroup contact or intergroup conflict. So intergroup contact is a pretty basic phenomenon that a lot of us probably experience but don't really know the name of. Intergroup contact is essentially just when an individual interacts with those who don't identify with things that they themselves identify with, right? So um, the most common thing that you can think about in terms of intergroup contact is racial intergroup contact. Interacting with those who are of different racial or different ethnicities as you. And other things um, such as social class, uh, sexual orientation, gender stuff like um, liking a certain type of music or being a fan of a certain sports team would be considered things that you identify with. Intergroup contact is really what I see as something that affects every single person in their day-to-day -day lives and has the potential to manifest such important social change in our nation and in our society today because really interacting with people who are different from you will not only reduce prejudice but will also foster a lot of empathy a lot of understanding and will be really the key to how the rest of humanity can kind of all coexist in the same place together is if we just all got along and understood each other this research and this idea is really what i want to contribute to the world and what i think is um, a very simple yet very complex and incredibly important topic that needs to be in the forefront of a lot of our mindsets and how we choose to go about our day-to-day -day lives and, and thinking about what we care about and what we want to do in terms of making the world a better place. So, well, that's kind of getting off a little bit off topic. So because I want to research social psychological topics and focus really mainly on social networks and movement and activism and collective action, Indiana University was actually the best fit for me. Um, and not only with that, but a big, a big reason that I chose Indiana University was because it is in the top 20 in the nation of sociological programs. It's always nice to have training from one of the top 
institutions in the nation. Indiana University also houses a lot of really amazing faculty. Um, Dr. Okamoto, Dr. Rojas, Dr. Bernard, Dr. Clarko, and a lot of different a lot of other faculty that I'm probably forgetting to mention, but so those are the ones that stood out to me in terms of wanting to work with them. Um, there's a lot of really great research topics happening at Indiana right now with immigrant activism, with social network stuff and social movements, a lot of specific racial stereotype research going on. There's a social psychology lab that I'm very excited to try to be a part of, and a lot of really cool graduate students researching topics on the things that I'm also very interested in. So, and not only that, but Indiana University just invested about $6 million on an observatory of social media, which the primary purpose of the facility is to combat the spread of misinformation online. And that's all very crazy and exciting. And I think that being so close to some, a resource like that is um, such a huge benefit because really social media is part of a person's social networks and just as important as the people that you surround yourself with and the environment and the work environment and community environments that you surround yourself with. So I am nothing but excited about, about that prospect of having that so close to the program. So at Indiana University, I am not only getting my PhD in sociology, but I also want to get my dual masters in applied statistics because I really just love math and I want to be a well-rounded researcher, obviously, but really focus mainly on being a, a quantitative researcher. And I know that a dual master sounds like a lot of work, but I believe the selling point was that the sociology program already has all these statistical requirements that getting your master's in applied statistics would actually only be about three more courses. Don't quote me on that. So um, not only will it be beneficial that you already have all this training, it just is a nice perk to have, to have more mathematical training because really that's, that's what makes a good researcher, right? So um, aside from all the research topic stuff, I will be moving to Bloomington, Indiana in the next couple of days. I haven't packed yet, but I don't, I mean, I don't really think it's gonna be that, that hard. I already have a house set up with two really cool dudes from my cohort. We're all doing the same program and we all have different research interests, which is gonna be super, super fun household to be a part of. And um, I can't wait to update you all on that. Bloomington, Indiana is actually not gonna be much different from where I currently live right now in Davis, California because it's also a small college town. Bloomington has a population of about 80,000, I think with students being 50,000 or something like that. So it's going to be a very great college town, a blueberry amongst a sea of strawberries, which basically means it's like a li little, little democratic area amidst a, a red state. So that's going to be interesting to say the least. I've only lived in the Western United States for most of my life, so I haven't really gone out anywhere farther than that, especially the Midwest, which is basically in the east, eastern United States. I don't even know why they call it the Midwest. It's so far away, but there is a big difference of weather, and California has been nothing but great, and I know that Indiana snows. I promised myself that after living in Reno, Nevada for for, for about four years that I would never, never go back to living in snow, but here I am. I think it'll be worth it and I think it's going to be a great opportunity and I can't wait to get there. Stay tuned for the next update where I'll probably do a really fun house tour after everything's all said and done and things are all settled and I've decorated. I'll do a house tour, maybe um, show a little bit of, of Bloomington, Indiana so that um, you can all follow along with with how it's going. So thank you so much for watching and being interested and feel free to reach out to me on social media sites, email, if you have my number, call me. I'll be more than happy to talk about stuff. Anyways, I will leave you guys with, um, make sure to love one another and be kind to each other. Try not to be too judgmental about 
anything or anybody. Thanks again for watching, you guys.